Đấy. Blessings out. Let's see who pull up, man. Oh, I'm going live on four platforms. I got TikTok up here. I got my other TikTok right here. So it's my main TikTok, my backup TikTok. Then I got uh, Instagram right here, and I got YouTube right here, man. Let's see who pull up and put it in part, man. La, what they do, man? Jew, what's popping, man? I see you. I see you, bro. <laughs> Edward, what's good? Prayers up, blessings up, man. Jeanette, what's going on? So, here's what I'm about to do. You know, I'm, we're, I wanted to celebrate because, well, like me and my wife, we actually going, we, we got a uh, we do a couple of days, like a little couple of day vacation. We got a spot out here on the beach and we're going to vibe out for a couple of days to celebrate because we hit 2,000, or excuse me, 200,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube. We hit 200K on YouTube in like, I don't know, man, it was like 10 days. We just been going nuts with the shorts. It ain't been no more than two weeks. We, we, we got 200,000 subscribers. So I'm beyond grateful for it. And I just wanted to give back and I wanted to show one of my favorite snacks on this live. I'm going to put it together. If you like avocados, you're going to love this snack. So I'm going to show how I put this snack together. This is actually one of the recipes in our cookbook. You know, this is one of my favorite, um, a fresh, raw snack, you know, period. You know, this came to me about a year ago, and I've been doing it ever since. In the meantime, while we're doing this live, I'm going to be doing a 50% off sale. Like I say, this is to celebrate the success that we've had on, on um, YouTube, man. Shout out to everybody on YouTube pulling up. You feel me? Okay, what they do. So we're doing 50% off my book. You know, I make it very easy to understand how I lost 100 pounds. You know, this was me. In 2014, I was 260 pounds. And I lost the weight still eating what I like to eat. So I'm going to answer questions. I want to get into that. We're going to have a weight loss conversation. I'll probably be on this live about an hour. And then I'm going to get up out of here and we're going to start our vibe session. Me and my wife, we off the map for the next couple of days. So this is like the last little piece of work that I'm going to do. Until probably Monday. But, so, in, so without further ado, what I'm about to do now is I'm going to show you how I put this snack together. Again, this is my, this is honestly my favorite way to do a fresh avocado snack. So first thing I do, I take the avocado and I cut it like this. All right, and I take the seed out. I get this seed out of there. And I want to get the questions at the end, you know what I mean? If I catch any while I'm, you know, in the, in the process of putting this together, feel free to drop them. If I catch them, I answer them. Yo, bro, positivity is all consuming. Appreciate that. Great energy. New subscriber here. That's love. Mike. Mike Jones. What they do, man? It remind me of the rap. Mike Jones. I wonder what's up with Mike Jones, man. I used to rock with Mike Jones. I thought he was lit for putting his phone number on all the songs like that. I was like, that's something I would do. Mike Jones put his phone number. He used to say that thing about a hundred times in the um, in the song. Times, right? You remember he used to be saying this his phone number in all the songs? I mean, you, you just had to say something. He said it at least at least 20 times, which you might as well round that up to a hundred. So anyway, so look, so now I'm on. Um, man, you shot out, man. She love doing that, like go jump in and be like a hundred times, man. Who we got? Denise in the, uh, I see Denise was popping. That look like the uh, Ghana flag. What they do? So check it out. This is how I cut the avocado. So I cut it like that because I like to have the little rectangle squares. So I cut the avocado this way. I'm going to cut me a piece of this lemon. Because I'm going to use this in a second. Now this snack, you're going to see how fast this thing come together. 
I'm going to put this over here. This is what I do with the uh, tomatoes, right? I cut them the long way. So I, I like these are the uh, great uh, tomatoes. I don't, the cherry tomatoes, they're a little bit too wet for me. I like the ones that are a little bit longer, not the perfect circle ones for this snack. And I cut them the long ways. So I cut them like this. I like these tomatoes because they're a little bit more firm. They're not really like full of that liquid like juiciness. Like the cherry tomatoes are like that on the inside. The ones that are like a perfect circle. I don't really like those tomatoes like that. So this is what I'm going to do. I cut the tomatoes up. And I'm getting these ready to go. And I put these on the plate. This is a simple snack. But I'm telling you, if you ain't never do this snack, you'll love it. Shout out to everybody pulling up to the live. I just wanted, you know, in, in probably like the next, honestly, about the next week, me and my wife are going to do another seven-day all raw fruit and veggie cleanse. So we're not going to be eating nothing but raw fruits and vegetables for seven days. Um, and when we do the cleanse, I usually eat this two or three times within them seven, seven days, like during the day. It's just a nice snack, man. It hit the spot and it's full of flavor. And you're going to see how this thing come together. So I cut all of these tomatoes up like this. This is very important, this part. Because it's going to come into play later the way we, we put the flavor on it. If you don't cut them up like this, the, the when we season them up, the flavor ain't going to stick to them the right way. It ain't going to taste the same. So we cut them this way. I need to get on that cleanse with you. We're going to be picking a couple of people to jump in the group with us. Every time I do the cleanse, we pick a couple of people. This will be the last cleanse that I do. Um like that from now on it'll be you know everybody that joined our weight loss community will we'll do the cleanse together but we're building that out right now on kajabi so this this next cleanse that i do will probably unless we put this one in the community but i don't think we will but we might but if not then we'll we'll uh i just pick out like five to ten people and we all get in i, I make a group chat on um instagram and we all just go through the cleanse together we talk about what we're eating we keep each other motivated you know what I mean? That's why I'm creating a community so we could, it could be a big group of us doing the same thing. But the cleanse is real dope, man. It's good to get off that cooked food for seven days and let your body kind of clean itself out. You feel the difference. It's not the easiest thing in the world, trust me. But every time I do it, I lose weight and I feel better. I'll be hungry, but I, my energy go up. Uh, let me see. I'm sorry, Instagram. I wish I could make the words bigger on Instagram. It's hard for me to, um, excuse me, um, YouTube. It's hard for me to read. The words is little. How do folks look into your weight loss uh, group? The community, we're going to, you'll see the link popping up. We're, we're going to start uh, promoting that and within the next two weeks. We're building it out right now. You know what I mean? So we're building it on Kajabi. It's going to be, you know, you'll get a login and your credentials and you could log in. And it's going to be a whole digital uh, instructional platform, which is going to be like a weight loss school. Go over all the principles, what's in my book, and I make it real easy to understand how to choose correctly. We're going to have a meal plan. It's going to be dope. It's going to be a whole year worth of a meal plan. We're going to have a, a community where we all, um, we can find accountability partners. We post our weight. You know what I mean? We get on the scale. We take pictures. We hold each other accountable. It's all about the results. You feel me? And then, we, you know, we're going to also have um, uh, cooking. We're going to cook every month together, get on a Zoom, and we all get together we all got the recipe together and we get it down, you feel me? We all cook together, that's gonna be dope. And then I do monthly coaching where everybody can ask their questions and get their questions answered and you can learn from other people's questions and that's how that's gonna go, you feel me? It's gonna be dope. That'll be, we'll be launching that in the next month or so. We're building it out right now. Okay, let me get this going. You see I got the tomatoes. Last thing I need to do is cut up the cilantro. Some people don't like cilantro. I love it. To me, the snack, it, it, I just, I, I couldn't even imagine doing this without cilantro. But if you don't like cilantro, what I would do as a backup, I would cut up like a spring mix of lettuce just to have, you know, some greenery on there. But something that's not, or, or even if you like uh, maybe parsley, you could drop on there. I love cilantro. 
You know what I mean? So we got that going. Watch how this come together. Now, I need to grab a spoon. Hold up. Let me grab this spoon. Grab this spoon. All right, so we got the tomatoes. Let me move this over to the side. We got the tomatoes right here. I'm going to do half the plate tomatoes. And half the plate avocado. So remember, I cut the avocado like this in the squares. Then I scoop the avocado out. Sometimes it be the simplest snacks that be the, that taste the best. You do, you, do, you do not have to do too much, but until you try this, you ain't gonna know how amazing it tastes, man. You just gotta try it if you never did. This came to me in a vision one time. I was like, man, cause I like, you know, I was doing this just on avocado. Like I would put these seasons that I'm about to use just on avocado, I eat it with a spoon. And then, one time I just thought to do it on a plate with, a, with some, we had some cherry tomatoes and I just did it with the tomatoes. And I've been hooked ever since. So now I'm spreading these out. So I like to spread these out where it's like, the, you know, all the pieces are separated. So this way all the pieces get that season on them when I season them up. Watch how this come together. All right, so we got an avocado and we got the cherry tomatoes. Half the plate, half and half, you feel me? So that's that. That's done. Now, I take this chipotle powder. Matter of fact, yeah, I take this chipotle powder. And you can go heavy on the chipotle powder, you can go light on the chipotle powder, or you could just not even use it. It's up to you. Me, it's mandatory. I need this on there. It, it, it take it up uh, like... Beyond a notch. Without the chipotle powder, it's not nearly as good to me, in my opinion. So I drop the chipotle powder. I like it kind of heavy. I like things with a, with a nice amount of spice. Okay, that's done. Now, I take the uh, peppercorn. I drop the peppercorn on here. Like this. Bomb. Simple. Then I take this natural sea salt. Now, one of the things that helped me lose weight with the sea salt... Uh, with the salt, I made a salt, I actually talk about this in my book, I made a switch when it comes to salt. Um, I stopped with the iodized white table salt. Um, one of the side effects of iodized white table salt is water retention, which leads to weight gain, but there's a lot of other side effects. It's a, it's a salty chemical. Iodized salt, by definition, is a chemical. When you look up the process of making it, you'll see. It's very, very um, concerning. So I just get, what I did, I switched out to a natural you know, sea salt, or I'll use, uh, you know, like a, a, a all natural kosher salt. Be careful with the kosher salt because they're not always all natural. Um, or like a pink Himalayan salt. I just switched it out for a natural salt. You know what I mean? So you see, I just cracked that uh, natural salt on there. Now look, I take the cilantro and I and I just sprinkle it over the top like this, just a drizzle. You feel me? I drizzle that. Stop playing with me. Now you see what's going on. Huh? Watch this. <laughs> if that look fire, man, drop some fire emojis in the, uh, in the comments. Let me see you pull up and put it in part. If this look good to you, if this is something that you would eat, drop some fire emojis in the comments, man. Let me see you pull up and put it in part. Carlos, what they do, man. Uh, I see you, man. Brendan, what's, what's good? Miss Becky, what they do? I see the fire dropping on the TikTok. Now what they do, man? Maria, what's good? Okay, now that looks good. Okay, Maria, I see you. So you got to see it all come together. I get it. Okay, KK, what's good? There they go. Now watch. This is the final finishing touch. You, this is very, very important. You need a fresh lime or a fresh lemon. And you come in here like this. And you just, you, just, you know what I mean? Drizzle this lemon over the top of this whole situation. This is mandatory. You cannot have this snack without this part. This is what sets it off. You get that lemon juice on there. And that's that, man. It's done. It's done. Like I say, this is a simple snack. But until you've tried it, don't judge it. And don't just take my word for it. Try it for yourself, man. Hold on. I'm about to get a nap. 
Now what I want to do is eat this and I got uh I got about 30 minutes, I got about 30 more minutes on the side. Oh, you know what? I'm about to get a piece of this garlic bread that my wife made from scratch. Oh, I made this? Okay, I made this from scratch. I might get two of these garlic breads. Look at this. This is left over. But I'm gonna drop these in this toaster. Now this garlic bread was made with all natural flour. We got this bread from uh the sourdough bread that we got from Publix. And, it, and it's made with natural flour as opposed to enriched flour. Talk about enriched foods all the time. I lost 100 pounds, man. I lost the weight still eating bread. I was still eating pasta to this day. You're going to see I'm going to eat this bread right now. What I learned was I was eating the wrong type of bread. You feel me? So here we go. Now I'm about to... Purchase his book, peeps. It's good. Oh, man, Sonia, that's love. I appreciate the love, man. I'm doing a 50% off sale. If anybody want to grab a copy, we're doing 50% off. I got the discount link underneath my profile picture on all the pages right now. Mm, mm, mm. You can taste that chipotle powder. And you taste that lemon. Then you got that saltiness and that black pepper that's on there. You got the cilantro that give it that zest. And when you can, when you combine all, all of those things together, I like to get a bite like this with a tomato and an avocado on it. Damn, I dropped a piece. I like to get a piece like this. No, oh, it's so fire. Oh, trust me, it is. And it's simple. You see how, you see how quick this is? This is a simple snack. And you'll be surprised. All you need is an avocado. <coughs> I use, I get them small little things of tomatoes. They like $3.50 from the store. I eat off that twice. I use half of it two or three times. I use half of it or a third of it with the tomatoes, cut them in half. So I can get two or three different. This is like a, a lunch. Like, you feel me? It's a snack. It, it put me right where I want to be. Why, when I eat this, it don't. What I like about this as a lunch, what I don't like about it is it don't really fill me up like that, but I love how it tastes and my energy stay up as opposed to like if I eat like a sandwich or if I eat like some chicken or something, which I barely ever eat anymore, or if I eat fish. When I eat this, everything raw, man, to keep my energy up. I might still feel a little bit hungry, but I'll be more productive throughout the day, I notice, when I eat lunches like this. <coughs> if anybody got any questions, feel free to drop them, man. I didn't realize that Publix had good bread. You got to go through them and look. They do. They got a few options. The best time to go to Publix and get the good bread, one, they got a bread that's pretty good. The best option is, as far as when you're in the bread section, not the bakery, the bread section, they got a bread called uh, Dave's Killer Bread, which is pretty good. It uses natural flour as opposed to enriched flour. And then the bakery, they got a mountain bread that's good. They got a whole wheat bread in there that's good. All natural flour. And this right here, they got the bread that you can cut up and um, put it in the oven and bake again. Like they got the sourdough bread and the ciabatta bread that uses all natural flour as well. So the best time to go catch those breads in the bakery is in the morning. A lot of times they'll sell out. A lot of times they'll sell out of them things by around 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. They'll be done. And it won't be no more natural breads left. That's what I noticed at least at the Publix at our place. But sometimes it'd be like, like there's a Publix that I go to where I used to go to in Broward. When I used to work up in Broward. And they didn't never have, they never had anything that wasn't enriched. So it kind of depends on your store. Good news though, you can order, you can order breads online as well. You know what I mean? Uh, let me see if anybody got any uh, questions. Feel free to drop them. What's the bread? What's the bread from the bread section again? Um, the ones I like is uh, it's uh, they got a, a mountain bread, the wheat mountain bread though, and the, and then this right here. This is a sourdough bread that you can bake. It's like in a plastic bag and when you can bring it home and bake it or you can make like garlic bread out of it but it's it's made with natural flour so the most important part of looking for breads if you're trying to lose weight 
and you still want to eat bread, what I did and what thousands of other people I've been able to help do as well and lose weight while still eating bread, you got to read the ingredients and make sure that the bread wasn't made with enriched flour. Let me ask y'all a question. What about spelt bread? I've ate that too. No. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not here to say this is the healthiest option of all the things to eat. That's not my lane. My lane is weight loss and being honest about what I did. That's why I wrote my book. I wrote this book. I forgot to cut my phone on silent. I wrote I wrote this book because um Hold on y'all. Let me because I just want, I, you know what I mean? I wanted to make it simple to understand what I did to lose the weight. You know, that's where I came from. So I, I've ate spelt bread. They got bread, what is called Ezekiel bread and that, that type of bread that you can get from the frozen section. I was eating that bread as well. And uh, the weight was coming off me. And after I lost all the weight, it stayed off me. So... Let me ask y'all a question, see who I can help on this live. When's the cookbook coming? I appreciate that question, Joy. We uh, is getting designed as we speak. Jen's our designer. Um, when we come back from our little weekend vacation, me and my wife, um, hopefully everything will be ready for m on Monday for us to start taking pre-sales. So the goal is Monday, definitely no later than Friday, unless Jen just fumbled the ball and she's taking too long. But she just told us that she'll be done with the, um, was it the e-book she said she was done with or the physical copy, man? The ebook. So she's pretty much, she's already done with the ebook. So she just got to finish designing the inside of the physical copy. I didn't know this before I, you know, got into the book game. Like, you got an outside design. So you got to have someone design the front. You got to have someone design the back. If it's a thick book, you got to get this part designed. So that's one thing that needs to be designed. You got to copyright the book. When you copyright, you're going to get a, 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 what is called a, a ISBN number. So it's a process to, and it comes with a barcode. So you got to get that. Um, and But then... All books, this part of the book, the inside part of the book, all of this, it got to be designed. And it got to be designed to fit the, the dimensions of the size of the book that you got the outside designed to be. And then so everything got to be designed and lined up for when you got that file, you can give it to your manufacturer, and manu whoever you decide to manufacture the book. And they'll, be, they'll have the file format. You get them that and then they, they can print out your book for you. So that's how that works. So it's a process, you know what I mean? So Jen is, the, we're done with everything, the outside, you know what I mean? But we're just waiting for the um, the inside of the book to be finished, designed, and then we can get that. We go through Amazon to get our book um, manufactured. So as soon as we get that back, we're going to start taking pre-sales. I want to say balsamic, basil balsamic. Oh my God, is that avocado and tomato? It is. And trust me, it's fire. You could drop some balsamic vinegar on this too. It'd be dope if you like that type of flavor. Me personally, I prefer a lemon. I use the avocado, cilantro, um, chipotle powder, cracked sea salt, cracked black pepper. A simple recipe. And then I squeeze the lemon on top of it. That's it. Simple recipe, but fire, man. Uh, yes, I see. So Le Lele just asked for the ingredients. I just told, I just said it, so you got that. I weigh three hundred and fifty pounds. I'm miserable, and my fiance just lost both of her legs. Now I'm sorry to hear that. Diabetes. Can you please help me? Okay, so when, it, so, Corey, um, first, just know I, you know, I just put a prayer up in my mind for you and your wife. I want to be very clear about this. I like to stay in my lane. My lane is weight loss. The people that I've been able to help and the people that I'm looking to help are people that are at now where I was in 2014 when this was me. I came into different sets of knowledge at different sets of times that I applied and the weight started coming off me while I was still eating what I like to eat. Now, so I wrote the book to make it simple to understand what I did that worked and the weight came off of me. I did not write the book because I had diabetes 
and I ate like this and I cured myself from diabetes. Those are two different things. Everybody knows there's a connection between weight and health, but it's not that basic. So that's why I put in my book, I mentioned Yaki. Yaki is a healer. So, uh, Corey, if I was you, that's what that's who I would start to study. He's on YouTube. His name is spelled Y A H K I. Yaki TV is his YouTube channel. If somebody could put it on YouTube in the comments, I'd appreciate that. Um, and you could screenshot that, Corey. So, if somebody could drop that in the comments, Yaki spelled Y A H K I. Or if you could write that down, Corey, because trust me, that's who you want to study. It's going to be a different approach for you. Um, and anybody else that you might know that is looking to cure themselves naturally, um, that's his lane. He's helped thousands of people, man. Beat diabetes, cancer, and, you know, AIDS, herpes, all of that. Documented. And so I would go that route. You know, he's more qualified to give you that type of advice than me. Let me see. Yaki is the truth. Yeah. Shout out my brother Yaki. He really is, man. That's how you screenshot that right now. Sorry, I got four different phones. I got a phone up here and I got three phones down here. Look. You feel me? I got the two phones out. I got the one right here and then I got the two phones right here. <laughs> If anybody got any questions, feel free to drop them, man. What month, what month can I grow sugar cane and how long does it take to grow? This is my first time growing sugar cane. I just put the post up. When it comes to agriculture, I'm learning as I grow. So I haven't actually started the sugar cane plant and brought it all the way to the part where I harvest it. I'm doing that this year, but from what I understand... What I just, because I, I I just put the post up, I'm assuming you've seen it, where I planted it. And all you got to do is put the nodes in the dirt and it start to grow. Well, I, I put them in the dirt. They're like, I got like four of them, five of them that are already this tall. It's growing fast, man. So I'm going to plant them in the garden. I got a garden in the back. I got the lettuce garden going. I'm going to plant them along the fence. Um, and in between the sugar cane, I'm going to put uh, turmeric roots in the ground. And I'm going to grow some turmeric plants around the edge as well. But... They were saying that next year, it, it like once a year. So if I, you know, if I plant them, this is the time of year you want to plant the sugar cane. And then around um, like the end of spring, summer next year, it's ready to harvest. I think it, it take about 10 months before it's tall. Like it get tall and you cut it down. So I'll know this time next year for sure. I'll know from experience. How do I eat healthy if I'm homeless in camp or for food? Well, that's a great question. And the, 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 I feel like anytime we're in a situation where we're all the way on empty, um, the good news is there's no place to go but up. Either we could stay on empty or we could go up. So that's the good news. I've been there. So I know what it's like to not have nothing. So the best thing that I, that I, the best advice that I could give you is to start focusing on my mindset. If I were in your position, this is what I would start to do. So when I read that sentence, I said, you know, what can I do if I'm homeless and I can't afford food? Right there, I seen a mistake when you use the word can't. Because you can't. Okay. One, food is is really free. Now I get what it's like to be on the inner city, and it's not that basic. But there's something that can be done every day to uh, to either get food for free or get some money to get the food. That's a whole nother topic. But the first place, the the best advice that I could give you is to stop saying I can't and to start asking yourself a question: How can I? What can I do? Ask your brain computer that. What can I do? And start seeking out the answers. What's the best? What opportunities are in my area for homeless people? 
Anytime I can get my hand on a phone from somebody, I would be Googling. You feel me? Anybody that I come into contact with, they got access to a phone, I would be using the phone for information. Whatever I learn, I would take action steps and just keep it going a day at a time. Be very aware of the words that you choose to use about yourself. Never say you can't do something. You can do it. So instead of doing that, ask yourself, how can you? That's the best advice I could give you right now because that, that, you know, it's, it's a complicated situation, but you got options. Being grateful is a great is a great start too. Just be grateful for what you do have. Breath. Sit down. Look at the look at look at the plants when you pass by and start paying attention to the, the to just your atmosphere and what what you do have. You feel me? And start being grateful for that. Wake up in the morning and smile. That's one of my biggest. I'm gonna be honest with you. Sometimes it's the smallest things that lead to the biggest results in life. Sometimes it's the smallest little things. Like what I just told you, right? It's people that pay me to be their coach, right? And they pay me and I give them this information that they paid for. This is a part of what people pay me for. We have a daily routine. A part of the daily routine is, and this is something that I've learned along the way, and it's a lot of successful people that do this. Because success isn't just money. Success is about feeling good, being happy, having high energy. Since I started doing this, it changed my life. As soon as I wake up in the morning, even before I open my eyes, I smile. It don't matter if I feel sick. It don't matter if my grandma just died. It don't matter anything because she just passed not too long ago. It don't matter. It wouldn't matter if any, God forbid, anybody any, even closer to me were to pass. I wake up in the morning and I smile. And then I, I go through everything that I'm thankful for and I pray. I pray to the creator of all things. When I pray, I pray to you, they wafe, Yahweh. I pray and I, and I thank him. For everything that I got going for me. And then I ask, how can, how can I serve people today? How can I represent you in a good way and bring people value? So I wake up in the morning. I ask the creator of all things, which in really I'm asking myself. When I ask the question, I go to thinking about it. I go to thinking about the answer. I start getting ideas. I write them down. And then I do them. Some of them work. Some of them I learned a lesson from because it didn't work the way I thought it would, but I learned something. I hope that helped. Only way to know if that'll work for you is if you try it. But you got to be consistent. It got to be an everyday thing. Everybody heard that like, uh, oh, it looked like you woke up on the wrong side of the bed or you woke up on the right side of the bed this morning. The way you start your day a lot of times, that's the way your whole day will play out. So the best way to start your day is just smile, man, and, 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 and think about what you're grateful for. Big fan from Alaska. That's La Diesel. What they do is crazy. When I was five years old, I lived in, I lived in Anchorage for like six months with my uncle Butch and Julie. True story, man. I learned how to ice skate when I was five years old. They got a videotape of it, me on ice skate in Anchorage, Alaska. Your meal uh, sounds crunchy at each bite. Have you, have, you been to, <laughs> have you been to Jamaica? It's funny. I just brought up Jamaica to my wife. Not yet. I'm looking forward to going. Though. I'll tell you that much. What's crunching is them cilantros. Them cilantros was crunchy. If anybody got any questions about uh, weight loss, feel free to drop it. I got about another, uh, what? I'm getting off this live at 3.15, so about another 20 minutes. I'm going to be on here vibing. Any questions about, oh, Titusville. Shout out Titusville, Florida. I've been up there. That's where they take, where they launch the, um, the rockets into space up there in Titusville. Shout out Titusville, Florida, man. Y'all got that water, that glow during the, during the summertime. I ain't seen it yet, but if you go up there at night and you go in the ocean, they got that water that's uh, bioluminescent. You can touch it. It turn like neon blue. I've seen it on camera, but I ain't been there to see it yet, but I'm going to go next year. I keep saying I'm going to go. I just ain't make it up there for that yet. What should I start eating to lose weight? The first step. Okay, who is that? Mary. That's a great, that's a great, great, great. Let me ask you this, Mary, and be honest. For the last month, do you read the ingredients of everything that you buy from the grocery store? If you go to a restaurant, do you ask, I'm talking to you, Mary, do you ask 
your server what is the plate made with are you aware of enriched food in the enrichment process and different processes of foods do you always read the ingredients every time you buy food from the grocery store mary drop it in the comments let me know are you strictly plant-based not yet i still eat meat there's certain there's certain there's certain um I'm waiting for Mary. I'm going to give you a quick second. No. Okay. Bingo. That's where you can start. Start right there. Start by reading the ingredients of everything you buy in the grocery store. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. Watch this, Mary. This for you, Mary. Hold on. I'm about to, I'm about to show you what I'm talking about. I like to learn like that better. Let me just grab this. Hold on. I'm about to grab this too. And let me just show you an example of what I mean. Right? Okay, so this, this helped me out big time. What I'm about to tell you right now, it was probably 40% of the weight that was on my body. When I learned this and I made the switch, out of the 100 pounds that was on my body, I lost 40 pounds just from doing this. So Mary, have you ever seen this right here? Do, do you ever buy this type of flour to all purpose? Anybody that ever buy this flour, drop a four in the comment if you know about this Pillsbury all purpose flour. If this is the flour that you use, um, let me know in the comments. Drop a four if you use this comment. So Mary, right, with this one, you see right here, all-purpose Pillsbury flour. But then you'll see right here, it say bleached, and then it say enriched. So I talk about the enrichment process all the time. It's a process, for example, this is made with flour, something like this. But this flour was enriched. It show it right on the pack. So anytime you see that word enriched, it means that the grain was put through the enrichment process. That's a process where they strip the germ from the grain. There's natural nutrients in, inside that germ, B vitamins and things like this. There's scientific names for them like riboflobin, folic acid, things like this. They extract it. They, the, the, the germ is lost. through a, It's a chemistry process, a process they bring the grain through. So then what they do, they add synthetic nutrients to replace the nutrients that was lost during the enrichment process. They strip that germ because it can spoil and go bad. When they strip it, the flour, it can, you can set this on the shelf for 10 years and use it 10 years later, right? So if, as a business model, it's smart because, you, you know, you're not going to lose nothing to uh, it spoiling. And bugs won't even eat this. You can put a pile of enriched flour on the ground and put a, a, a handful of bugs on there that, that love wheat flour and they won't even eat it. So that should be a big red flag. So what, how you know, that's why I'm always saying read the ingredients, right? So how you know when you look at the ingredients right here, they, you know, I was programmed and trained to read this, the nutrition facts. But what really matters is what's, what's in it, the ingredients right up underneath here. So you'll see right here in the ingredients, it say bleached wheat flour. Then it say niacin, iron, thiamine, monotristate, riboflobin, folic acid, and enzymes. Right there. Those are the synthetic ingredients that I was just talking about. Niacin, iron, thiamine, monotristate, riboflobin, and folic acid, and enzymes. Well, some people might say, well, that's just the scientific names for the B vitamins and things like that. True, it is. But they don't have to specify if it was, if it was synthetic or natural. They both got the same exact name. How do you know? Because this is a natural flower, right? If you look all over this pack, you see it's all-purpose flower, the same deal, same color, same everything. But it wasn't bleached and it wasn't put through the enrichment process. How do you know? Read the ingredients. It say right here, organic hard red wheat flour, organic malted barley flour. That's all that's in this. You can see the ingredients right there. See? So that's, this is a natural flour. Now, if you put a handful of bugs on a pile of this flour, they're going to start mating and all. They're going to be eating. They're going to post up. They got everything they need. They'll eat this flour. They will not eat this flour. One of the side effects of enriched grains is weight gain. So you got to be aware. That's why I'm always saying read the ingredients. Um, flour make a lot of things too. It make your pasta, it make your macaroni noodles, it makes your pizza crust, it makes your uh, uh, you know uh, burrito shells, sandwich wraps, bread, you know, cakes, cookies. The list goes on and on. What up? So you want to be aware of that. You know what I mean? So that's why I wrote my book too. I broke down the principles 
of how to choose the right versions of what I already like to eat. I lost 100 pounds still eating what I like to eat. It's not that hard. It's really not. That's why I wrote my book, because once I realized I could still eat what I like, like, for example, I love bread. You see, I'm eating it right now. I'm eating the right type of bread. Once I realized I could do that, it made it easy for me to stay consistent, eating better food options. I used to have the mindset that I, you know, I, I had to stop with the, the, the pasta. I had to stop, like everything that, that I, I had to stop with the snacks and with the sugars and with the cookies. Once I realized I could still eat sweets, I could still eat the pasta, I could still eat the bread, I was still eating meat, I was still eating rice, and my weight was coming down, I was like, man, I could have been doing this. I want to do this. I don't want to go back to the way I was eating. I want to eat this way the rest of my life. I had that mindset shift. Good news is there's options available. We just got to get aware of, one, first we got to get aware of how to choose them. Then all we got to do is just take the time to make sure we pick the right ones and we put our food together like that. Are you going to go vegan? I'm not a vegan. I don't, why I don't consider myself a vegan? I respect getting off the animal flesh and animal products. I respect that about the vegan um, identity. But what I don't um, respect is that it's not within the guidelines that a vegan can't eat chemicals and heavily processed foods. So you got vegan options of like, like vegan butter, uh, you know, impossible burgers, um, impossible chicken, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, the list goes on and on. You got, you know, like um, vegan cheese substitutes. And when you read the ingredients, it's all type of chemicals in there. And when you look at the process of how a lot of these options that are vegan certified are made, um, there's a lot of side effects, one of them being weight gain. And so... That's why I created a, a new lane because another thing is if I want to eat animal, I do. I still, I, one day I'll be over it, but even like if I eat fish probably once a week or so, sometimes two, three times a week if I want to. I eat fish a few times a month, every month because I'm not over it yet. I still want to do it, but I'm slowly cutting back. If I want chicken or if I want steak, I'll eat it. It might be once a year or twice a year at this point. I barely ever eat it just because I don't want to anymore. I started slowing down on, on the animal products when I was, when it was 2020, I made that choice. But that's why I created a new lane. I consider myself a naturalite. Watch, wow, so let me show you. I'm not playing. What? Let me show you what I'm talking about. A naturalite is somebody who follows the principles of my book, man. I'm a naturalite, and it's a lifestyle. You feel me? And so, a naturalite, some of them eat animals, some of them don't. We do have guidelines if we are going to eat animal flesh. Um, a naturalite sees the wisdom of getting off the animal flesh, but some of us haven't gotten there yet. But, we, but what we don't budge is we are extremely intentional about being aware of the ingredients of what we consume, and we choose natural ingredients. Or we choose the closest thing to all natural that fits our budget that, that's in our area. A natural light is just aware. We might make a choice to eat something that's not 100% natural just because our budget don't allow it or because it's just too much of a mission to find something else because we didn't plan correctly or whatever. But we know that we're out of pocket. A natural, when we make these decisions, at least we know we're aware we're out of pocket right now. We, we, we ain't going to do this tomorrow. We're going to tighten up. So that's what a natural light is. We're not, we're, not too, we're not too strict on ourselves, but we are very strict on being aware. And, and you know what I mean? So that's what it is with that. Jay Simmons, I just seen the order come through. Jay, it's love. If I've been missing the orders when people have been ordering the books, my apologies. I've been focusing on these phones. I got the uh, notifications coming on this phone. I'm doing 50% off my book where I break these principles down. Uh, I make it real easy to understand how to choose, you know, better versions of whatever it is that you like to eat. And you'll be losing the weight when you start to follow these principles. We've helped thousands of people lose weight, man. So we're celebrating because we hit 200,000 subscribers. Shout out YouTube. We hit 200,000 subscribers on YouTube, man. I just started going live on YouTube like two days ago. It's a trip. I got about another 10 minutes on this live. I got to bounce. 
If anybody got any questions, feel free to drop them. I never seen you when you was big, bro. Can't find a pit. This is me right here. You know, you can see the inflammation in my eyes. You can see it in my face. You know what I mean? I was 260 pounds. That's my wife right there. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? This was me in 2014. I was living different at this part of my life in 2014. I really wasn't taking that many pictures. Um, whatever, I, you know. I, I, I made decisions that I'm, I'm ashamed of, to be honest with you. And um, I was at rock bottom in 2014. I, had to, I, I went through a bad period of karma. But the thing about it is I, I gained 100 pounds relatively quick. You know, between the age of 27 and 31, I gained 100 pounds. Pretty much, like really more like 80 pounds, 75 pounds. I was like 185 when I was 27 years old, and then I just started creeping up. I would gain weight, lose it, gain it, lose it, gain it, lose. I was just, but I was going up. I was trending up. For them few years, I went all the way up to 260, from 185 to 260. And um, that's when I um, made my first conscious, and I talk about this in my book, I made my first conscious decision that I've stuck to to this day to never eat fast food again. Just doing that, I lost around 30 pounds. Just doing that. I was still eating enriched food. I was eating processed food. Whatever I felt like eating, I was eating. I just, honestly, at that period of my life, and two, when this was me, we was living in the Pine Island Projects, man. When this was me, I just, you know, I figured that I, was, I had got that much overweight because how much um, I was eating fast food. I thought fast food was the number one. Like, I thought that was the whole reason. What kind of water do you drink? Which is the best? Um, that's a great question. Me, personally, I stick with spring water. And just, if I don't, if I can't find the spring water, I'll do distilled water as a backup. I don't do the drinking water and I don't do the purified water just because the processes of making those waters, this is all public information. You could Google search process of making purified water, process of making distilled water, process of getting spring water and the process of making um, drinking water. Drinking water and, and purified water are basically like tap water that have been brought through a filter and a chemical process to clean the water out. Spring water come from the earth. Distilled water is a process of distillation. You could distill any water. You, you basically heat it up and you catch the steam and it, it roll down into a container. You catch that and that's pure H2O, zero parts per million particles per million in the water. Distilled water is the only type of water that's pure H2O, nothing else in it. Spring water has natural trace minerals, which are good for our body. So I, I've, you know, I've been on just spring water for the last couple of years. You know what I mean? But, you know, the water wasn't really a big factor for me when it, when it came to weight loss, because I was drinking different types of water throughout the whole process and the weight was, I noticed the weight coming off when I got off the um, fast food, big time. I was still eating whatever I wanted. If I wanted a burger, I would still eat it. I just wouldn't eat it from McDonald's or Burger King or no fast food place. If I wanted french fries, I would still eat I would get french fries from the store and make them. Or I'd make a sandwich or I would just cook my own dinner. I'd make some rice with some a canned vegetable and some baked chicken or something. I just stopped eating fast food. I ate whatever else I wanted to eat. I just did not eat fast food. And I lost around 30 pounds. Quick too. It only took me probably like three to six months when I think back on it. Because this is back in 2014. The weight was constantly coming off me. So I figured I cracked the code. So I went from 260 to 230 and then I stopped losing weight. That's when I knew it was something that I was missing. You know what I mean? And then I came into the awareness of uh, uh, enriched foods. You know, then I became aware of how to choose the right versions of everything that could use enriched grains and make sure that I was using that version with natural grains. And I, that, that led me to becoming aware of processed foods and the different type of processes and the different type of ingredients being used. And then that's why I'm always saying read the ingredients. Brother, are you, brother, you are true and living. Been trying to get people right for years, man. It's all love, man. I appreciate the love. Yeah, I've been at this for some for for you know a couple years, about two years now, steady, man. You know, it's a lifetime. I'm, I'm gonna be doing this the rest of my life because you know, if it's not gonna be in this capacity, it'll be, it'll be in another.
Uh, I believe that. How do I say this? Um, I believe for me, my purpose, and for me to be happy and to be successful, I gotta, uh, I gotta be a servant. And I used to really hate that type of, even to say that used to make me feel sick because of slavery. But that was, that's a perverted sense of serving. Slavery is a perverted sense of, sl of serving to where I was a complete rebel against any idea of what it is to be a servant. First off, I'm a servant to the creator of all things and I'm proud of it. So I got to learn the rules and I, you know, the rules of the creator of all things is what? Be moral, be good and bring value to the people around us. To sum it up, there's, you know, there's more, there's a good little more detail when you read the whole Bible, you could get the game, but I want to be of service, service to people. I got to, I got to help people out. The more people that I help and the more people that I can make their life better, the more success and happiness and joy and abundance come to me. It's a fun, it's funny. It's a funny thing. I used to chase money and I wanted to be a hustler and I wanted to sell things and everything that I could get my hand on, but I wasn't thinking about bringing people value like that. I was just trying to think, would somebody want to buy this? But when I shifted it to like, how can I help people? It didn't happen overnight. Like it took for me to be consistent for about two years of really trying to figure it out and trying different things or whatever, whatever. And then, I, and then I, and, you know, I caught with the book and I wrote the book and I posted a post on YouTube on, uh, excuse me, um, TikTok and it went viral. And it was about food. It was about flour, actually. The first post that I put up that went viral was about flour. I went in the grocery store and I showed enriched flour. I made quick mention of what the enrichment process was and, uh, how it leads to weight gain. And then I showed a better version of flour and how it helped me to lose weight. And it went viral, man. And the followers just started coming in. It was a trip. And I was aware of the principle of, of being a servant. I had became aware of the, I had made that mindset shift and that choice back then, years ago. This is 2019 when I made that choice. 2020, I was fully committed. And when this happened, this was like 20, 20 the end of 20, the beginning of 2022. When, it, when I went viral on TikTok. For what it's worth. I hope that helps somebody. Let me see, man. I got about another uh, five minutes and I'm up out of here, y'all. What kind of flowers is this? This is a natural flower. I was just explaining the difference between an enriched flower, which is this, and a natural flower, which is this. Basically, enriched flower is a flower that's been put through the enrichment process. Um... It leads to weight gain. Anytime you see anything enriched, you can notice because it'll say enriched on the pack. And also, it'll be in the ingredients. You'll see it say bleached wheat flour. Then it's, it shows the ingredients. It's always the same ingredients in enriched uh, grains. Niacin, iron, thiamine, monotrisate, riboflobin, folic acid, and enzymes. So anytime you see those, those are the synthetic nutrients and B vitamins that they add to replace the natural versions of these vitamins and nutrients that was lost during the enrichment process. Our bodies don't respond the same to these chemicals. Even though that on a chemical level of chemistry, they look the same, our bodies don't respond to them the same because they brought it through a process. They heated it up and brought it down into a powder form. So, you know, riboflovin that, that's in a powder form is different than riboflovin that's in a potato. You feel me? Even though they got the same name, it's two different things and our bodies respond different to it. Let me see. Vegetable oil I would avoid. I, I have. It helped me to lose weight. That's the main oil that I used to use. Vegetable oil and um, canola oil. A good thing to do is to start looking up the process of making the oil. And don't just watch one video. Watch different ones. Some videos and some um, articles. You could read articles about the processes of making it in the companies and some articles are going to favor it making it look good and some are going to favor making it look bad with everything. You know what I mean? So it's good to read both and then pay attention to when you eat it. How do you feel? 
when you eat it, pay attention to your weight. Get on. That's why I tell everybody that I coach, especially get on this. And I talk about this in my book. You got to fall in love with that scale. Got to get on that scale every day, twice, once in the morning, once at night. And think about what did I eat today and what did I eat yesterday and be aware. And then what what you research and learn, compare that to the results that you get. Nieces McLean, I just seen the order come through Nieces is love. Your book title. The book is called Life Matters, so let's eat like it. So, you know, I just break down these principles. It's not hard, man. That's why, in my opinion, the book is so valuable. Because you can apply it and get results, like, real soon. You know, like, this week. Um, so, I make it simple to understand how I lost 100 pounds still eating what I like to eat. We're doing a 50% off sale to celebrate. We went uh, viral on YouTube. We got 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. My YouTube channel is the same, Jabez underscore invest. I've been posting shorts or whatever. It's like now it's like you, we got the plaque coming. We got the, the 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 YouTube plaque. My wife just got the email. They're sending us the plaque or whatever. So we celebrating, man. So we're doing 50% off. If you want to grab a copy of the book, feel free. I got the discount link underneath my profile pictures on all platforms. When you click that link, it'll take you to our website. When you click the book, you'll see the regular price at first. Um, but then when you click checkout on the checkout page, it's an automatic 50% uh, reduction. If you want to grab the book right now, we're going to, I'm going to leave that link up um, at least to the end of the day. I might leave it up for the weekend. I don't know. It depends how I feel, but it's going to be up for at least a few hours more. If you want to grab a copy, keep inspiring, develop. Yeah, man. It's all love, man. Bart, that's love. I appreciate that. Big fan of what you're doing. Oh man. I, that makes me feel good. T, what that do, my bro? I see you. Peace, my brother. Man, so you know, hey, man, where's the link? If you go to my page, if you like tap up here, if you go to my page, um, like my home, my home page where you can see all the videos, um, you'll see my profile picture at the top of the page. Right underneath that, you'll see the finger pointing down to the link. Click that link. It'll take you to our website. That's the discount link. Like I said, that'll be up for at least another five hours or so. I might leave it up all weekend. I'm, I'm in a good mood. We're, me and my wife celebrating. We're about to get it together right now because we're about to head out. And uh, listen, I'm going to finish the live like this. If you got to go to lose weight, chapter three in my book is mindset. You can see right here, chapter three is mindset. In my opinion... It's the most important chapter of my whole book. It's like anything else in life, you know? Any area where I'm weak in life, I, you know, the more I'm aware of mindset and how I think, the more I'm realizing I'm weak in that area because of the way that I'm thinking in relation to that area of my life. I'm, there's something that I could tighten up in my mindset. So a great place to start is if you got to go to lose weight, is to become real aware of the words that you choose about weight. To become real aware of that. Try to avoid words like, I can't afford healthy food, or it's not that easy for me, or, you know, excuse type words. Like, focus on Monica Johnson. I just seen the order come through Monica's love. Focus on empowering words like, but don't make them fake. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to lose 100 pounds in the next month. No, you, like, you know that ain't true. But use words like, especially questions. How, what can I do better? And then seek out the answer to the questions that you ask yourself. Write the questions down. How can I, lose, how can I get back to my natural body size? Another piece of advice that I would give you is to not put a, a number on it. To just put a, a desire on seeing your weight start to trend down. Don't put a number on it because it can get discouraging. Like if, if you say like, okay, I just want to lose 20 pounds and you might p don't even put a time on it. You might say, I want to lose 20 pounds. And then three months go by and you might be down five pounds. And you're like, damn, I'm only down five pounds. But three months went by, down, by and you're down five pounds. You're doing something right. You feel me? So the main thing you want to see is your weight trending down. To get a different result, we just got to do a different action. If, you know, I got 100 pounds overweight because I was doing the, I was making the wrong choices with food. When I started making different choices, my weight turned around. So if you got to go to lose weight, I hope this live helped. That's my prayer for you. Once again, we're doing a 50% off sale on my book, Life Matters, so let's eat like it. I make it real easy to understand. 
you know how you could you know eat the foods you like to eat and lose the weight. My brothers and sisters, I want y'all to know I love you and I wish you the best, man. Prayers up, blessings up.